Hello, in this video I want to go over what the guidance scale is when working with stable diffusion models. So a guidance scale is just another parameter like the prompt, the height, the width, and so on. So guidance scale kind of informs the model on how strictly it should follow your prompt. Kind of like the temperature if you are familiar with working with large language models. A lower guidance scale allows the model to be a little bit more loose with your prompt or a little bit more creative. And a higher value will make it follow the prompt very strictly. But a problem also kind of comes with generating the images as even though it tries to get more literal, there are other problems that do exist, which we'll jump into in just one second. So whether you're using Automatic 1111's Web UI, Comfy UI, or any other application to work with a stable diffusion model, you'll see this guidance scale parameter uh, available. So for example, in Automatic 1111, it's the CFG scale, and they kind of give you a hint if you hover over it which slides from 1 to 30 with a default value of 7. This is also available in the image to image tab uh, down here too. So let's go ahead and take a look at a few images with differing uh, guidance scales. So first up, here's a punk rock grandmother standing in New York City streets um, to kind of give you an idea of the prompt. I'm using the Stable Diffusion uh, XL base model. So at a CFG scale of one, we can see that there's very little color that is kind of vaguely representative of New York City in the background here. Uh, but overall, it does actually get the subject correct and uh, will generate an image. Although it's probably not usable for many instances. And as we kind of move up the scale, we can see that it gets more defined and much better. Generally speaking, a CFG anywhere between 6 and 12 will often generate the results that you're looking for. Uh, so as we can see here, 6, 7, 8, 9, and so on look pretty good. And uh, everything looks pretty well composed within the image. The coloring is fairly uh, good as well, too. Now, once we move up this guidance scale towards the higher end, we start to see... Uh, things get a little bit more exaggerated, especially with the colors. You can see everything kind of has a more of a contrast punch to it. Uh, we start to see new elements being introduced that might be following the prompt a little bit more closely. And it almost starts to become a unusable image, uh, anything after about 20 or so. It's just a little bit too much and highly stylized. Of course, you know, if this is the type of image you're looking for, then by all means set the CFG scale uh, all the way up to generate those images. But as we can see all the way at 30 here, things are getting a little crazy with the composition as well as the coloring. Uh, we see this across all sorts of images too. So if we go ahead and look at uh, the next example here is we have Totoro at a pub. Um, this one I put in step increments of five, so we don't have to scroll through all those here, but we kind of see the same sort of uh, weirdness going on at 1.0. Um, but six looks really good. There's a lot of good things going here. The lighting's not too far off. I believe the prompt included the term cinematic lighting. Um, but overall, it's a pretty good image. But again, though, once we get further up, we start to lose some of the details in the background. Um, the coloring, again, is very often overly saturated. And in the last example here is a landscape uh, photo of a herd of buffalo in Yellowstone National Park with mountains in the background. And so we see, again, um, some of the details are not really too clear in this one, like the mountains in the background, um, but it does get the herd of buffalo here correct, uh, but there is not much for color. Again, uh, somewhere in the 6 to 11 uh, range looks pretty good. Uh, and then once we get to 16, there starts to become too much contrast between the subjects um, and, say, the, the clouds here. And then 26, I don't know what's going on here. And then 31, this just looks like it's literally pulling anything associated with the Yellowstone into the image. Um, and there's all sorts of uh, uh, weirdness, if you will, going on within the image itself too. So how do you determine which CFG or guidance scale is best for your image? It's easy actually. If you go to the automatic 1111 interface, you can actually use this XYZ plot script. 
just change this X type to CFG scale, and then go ahead and do a range. So if you wanted to do say six to 12, you just go ahead and put that in there and it'll go ahead and generate the images at each increment there between six and 12 uh, when generating the image. Of course, you'll wanna put in a uh, hard-coded seed number here. So it's the same image, but just with a differing CFG scale. Now, if you want to do step increments or in say test between one and 30, you can actually put in one to 30 and then plus five. And then this will give you increments every five, uh, just like I did in the examples for the CFG scale. Now, if you want to take a closer look at these pictures, you can take a look at the blog posts or also the GitHub repository where I have the raw outputs um, for you to review. So I hope this video was helpful in understanding how the CFG scale impacts the outputs when working with stable diffusion models. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button. If you have any questions, drop a line in the comment section below. And last but not least, please consider subscribing. Would love to have you a part of the channel here. So until the next video, take care.